Thank you for staying with us on TVC Breakfast. And just like we usually do on Fridays, we bring some other kind of news items, which, and this time around, you can be assured of some more interesting or some interesting uh, feedback. And it's time to talk about Nigerian music legend, though in a slightly different pattern. Bella Anikula Mokuti held the world spellbound with his. Uh, hits music and made waves for his ideals as well as his non-conformity and radical character all of which he portrayed in his music and just as his music held the world uh, spellbound so did his very artistic album covers a musical genius like fella needed an artistic genius that could bring to life a visual representation of his lyrics and that uh, artistic genius that we have with us as Lemmy Gorioko is renowned for providing many of the original cover images for the recordings of Fela and once referred to as the king of covers by a UK magazine the Observer Music, Lemmy Garioku created and mastered over 20 of Bella's album covers. He joins us now to talk about his life's work, his present Nigerian music industry experience, and we also hope to hear uh, from him about his perception about the growth of Afrobeat since the years of Bella. We bring to you now artist, illustrator, and designer Lemmy Garioku. Welcome. Uh, it's good to see you. You look fabulous, by the way. Thank you. No, you don't look like Fela. <laughs> no, characters are different. Well, right. tell, tell us. Tell us about uh, yeah. that. Um, yeah, um, I met Fela in 1974. That was um, 48 years ago. Um, we hit it off immediately uh, because um, it, 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 um, I, I believe I was made for the purpose, ready-made, um, the ideal ideology of Pan-Africanism was what really binded us together. <clears throat> I totally was in sync with his philosophies. And um, so the relationship started. And um, like I love to say, in the beginning was the music. The music became so powerful, it needed an accompaniment. And my art came to play that role. So my art eventually ended up um, becoming a supplement to the music. It added value. You know, it made the message clearer in a visual form, you know. So, yeah, it's, it's interesting. And I feel very privileged to be alive today. I've been doing this for 50 years straight. Um, I, I, I feel really excited about the times now, what the young people are doing, um, Afrobeats. I feel really very happy. Sometimes I look in the sky. I say, Fela, where are you doing? Come and see you, you know. But Fela doesn't believe in going to the sky. <laughs> oh, he, he, he's, he's, believe that. he's that, that, That's an interesting part of, of, mm -hmm. of Fela. You know, you know, I read uh, the book, uh, the biography of a uh, professor, Ishe Sage. Oh, okay. uh, the, the mm. Professor Sage, as in the, the uh, legal icon. Yeah. And he said, in the 60s, mm -hmm. when Fela began, Fela was not singing this kind of music that he mm. was singing. Not at all. He was, he was more involved with high life and so on. In your own experience, how did Fela evolve? And what Easy. made him evolve? Did okay. you track that? And did yes. you reflect that in yes. your art? Yes, yes, yes. It's documented. It's well documented. Um, Destiny called when Fela uh, went to the US. You know, typically, you know, we all want to jack or something like that. So at a point, he was a bit frustrated with the high life. He wasn't getting enough impact. So he briefly moved to Ghana then decided to go to the U.S. on the tour, feeling like he was going to make a breakthrough. But he was disappointed. But the greatest thing that happened to him was he had this lady girlfriend, uh, Sandra Isidore, she's still alive, um, who conscientized him, introduced him to Pan-African thinking, because the lady was a member of the Black Panther movement in, in that time. Mm -hmm. So she showed Fela some books to read, specifically, uh, first and foremost, uh, the autobiography of Malcolm X, Mm. Um, after Fela read the book, Fela was actually playing one of his songs. Like he rightly said, during the High Life, there's just mundane lyrics. Mm. Uh, the song was titled Obe. So the lady was asking Fela, what was the meaning of this song? And Fela said, I can't eat soup without pepper. And the lady said, are you man enough? All the problems of black people in this world, you are singing about soup. Yeah. Mm. So 
Fella was challenged. Like the unko, 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 Yes, just mundane lyrics. Yes. But, but it so. did appear, with, from what you have recounted about mm. how Fella switched, yeah. basically, it did appear that there, maybe there was something in him that had long been buried, and maybe exactly. that one encounter just kind of, you know, Ex made exactly. him snap, literally, exactly. Exactly. somehow. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's like when, when I do my talk or workshops or talk to young people for guidance, I, I say, know thyself, find yourself. Mm -hmm. So at that point in time, Fela found himself through Sandra's connection. He had an so, epiphany. Yes, exactly. It's, it's normal. You know, some of us have to go through that. Like, I had my own epiphany at 18 when I met Fela. All the things I've been doing all fell into place. I realized, oh, okay, now, you know, I, I was conscious in 1966 when Millicent Small mm. visited Nigeria on promotional tour by Cadbury, Nigeria. I was a fan of Bombita already in 1966. And I was so much in love with Millicent Small's full album, My Boy Lollipop. So I thought she was a white lady. And when I saw her, I said in Yoruba to my aunt, I said, ah, in your dudu nisha. I've, I had raised pride as young as I so was. there was a connection. Yes. And okay, we see you didn't come alone. Um, this must be a catalog of all mm -hmm. your um, album covers, all the album covers you did for, for Fela. And what, mm -hmm. striked, uh, what struck me, I should say, was, you know, the, the display. It wasn't just an array of colorful display there mm -hmm. was a message you mm -hmm. passed across which seemed to which resonated largely mm -hmm. with fella's sentiments when composing the song and all that we i understand you also listened to the songs first mm -hmm. before now capturing some of his sentiments on to the cover. But then mm -hmm. there was a time, there was a period where you both fell apart. Mm -hmm. Before we get to that point, just <laughs> walk us through how you were able to connect with, um, with, with Fela through okay. the works you created for him. Yeah, like, uh, like I was explaining earlier, um, my consciousness had been there all along. In 1969, I was conscious when Miriam Makeba um, relocated to the U.S., you know, um, in eg uh, on exile from South Africa, the apartheid government. And I used to watch Miriam's interviews where she talks about the situation of black people and white people in the world and so on. Then 1972, when George Jackson of the uh, Solidar Brother fame, um, uh, one of the Black Panther members, was killed in San Quentin prison, I was conscious. I even cried when I was doing a drawing you know, to memorialize him. Mm. So, same 72, met Fela then. same 72, I met Fela. Oh, great. But I didn't know our destinies was going to cross. Mm. Two years later, our destinies mm. crossed. And the moment, we also shared a lot of books, readings. Fela loved to read, and I loved to read. We studied metaphysics together uh, at that point in time, too. So, I had the privilege to become so close to Fela. I became like a child to him, one of his best friends, and his youngest advisor mm. at that point in time. So. I knew when he wanted to compose a, a, a song. I knew the impetus, I knew the nu nucleus of that particular song. So I was so privileged in that direction. So I witnessed everything. So when he, after the recording, yeah. I already have in my, my mind how I was going to illustrate. And he gave me total freedom because I self-taught. So my style is very eclectic. So any mood that I find in a particular tune, I designed that way and he never queried it. He gave me so much freedom. I even put my photograph on the album cover. And he <laughs> still endorsed it. Yes, you yes, happy. yes. It was still so happy the moment, the first cover I did was Alagmo Close. And that was the moment he became a revolutionary, the moment he faced the establishment head on. All right. Uh, Lemme, you were talking earlier on about uh, the first work you yeah, did for him, cover, Alagmo, yeah. Alagmo, Alagmo Close. Close. That so, was the so moment he... Right. Took up that mantle, you know, to okay, face the establishment. More of a yeah, very revolutionary. Mm. And that was when I came in. And um, a writer in the UK had mentioned that it was a divine collaboration between me and Fela. Do you have that here? Yeah. Ah, unfortunately, I don't have it. There are right, so many. Okay. Uh, yes. I did 26 when he was alive, and I've done three posthumous. That's 29. That's uh, over half of his entire catalog in his career. Spanning through how yeah. many years now? Um, three decades 1974 to 93. So for three decades, I did those covers. So everywhere in the world now, Afrobeat is being studied. Uh, they talk about the music and also the art. Mm, it's the a art. package. And also, the, yeah. and also the personality himself, the artist. Yes. True. Yes. Now, um, you were always with Fela, for a lot of time you were with him. Yeah. 
you were not always, you were not only doing the, a work of the music, but also something of your familiarity with his environment, with mm. his lifestyle. Mm. Tell me those intimate things that people don't know that have also helped shape who Fela is and also your artistic impression. Uh, Fela was um, a very complex human being. Uh, but he was so talented, he was genius in many fields. Uh, for example, he was a very good human resource person because he had like 80 people living with him and everyone has a role to play. Um, he had like 40 girls in the house. That was interesting. It's very dramatic. So some of the girls were singers, some were dancers, some did the cooking, you know, and some were DJs because they played music 24 hours in Kalakuta. So then the boys too, some were electricians, plumbers, um, security personnel and mm. all that. And um, he had a court too, and he had a jail. To hear yes, the his, natural yeah, grievances yes, were arising. Yes, because you know, like he, he had to... He was, was a dictator. And was not he? really. He was, was a monarch. Was, <laughs> in a way, but, but, <laughs> but, was he, but, but he was, was a he fair, right, yeah. Okay, yeah, yes, to yes, hold yes, those yes. kind of people. So people know? can reconcile yeah. Feladi, I could not class with yeah. Feladi, the disciplinary. Can you reconcile yeah. that? Yeah, I can. Yeah, because, how? Because he needed that energy around him. And he needed to have needed order. order. Yes, yeah, some semblance of order at least, even within the craziness and the extreme freedom. You know, it's an irony. It's very complex. Absolutely, because one very would complex. call him a free spirit. And yes. Kind of, but yeah. then there was the need to there also... There was excessive freedom in Absolutely. Kalakuta, but by the same token, he puts everyone in Absolutely. check. Absolutely. So, so among and, your works, yeah. uh, among your works, which, yeah. which um, tell us about, I think you have um, Sorrow, Tears and Blood. Yes, Sorrow, uh, Tears and Blood. But I, I recall um, that that yeah. also had to do, and you clarified for me earlier, yeah. that this was this, the work that kind of reflected the pains his mother went through. Uh, um, at the hands. Actually, all the police brutality. Brutal, not just yes. on him, yeah. but this This particular song was inspired by the killings in Soweto. In Soweto as in well, June 16. Mm -hmm. So that triggered him and um, with all other items on brutality. So he came out with this song, Sorrow, Tears and Blood. Right. Yes. Right. Um, this was Beast of No Nation. After he was incarcerated, this yeah. so he, he, yes, he came out from jail and he, he was really vitriolic right, on this year. Right this on stuff. This, yeah. this. Um, he was angry. Yeah, he very angry. Uh, this um, Kalakuta show, a typical police raid. You know, fellow was, so like, he was like customer to, to police. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Right, this is better. Yeah, typical police raid. Uh, beast of no nation. A bit, a bit yeah. to, to this side. Okay. Okay, back. Yeah. Okay, all right. Um, sorrow, tears, and blood. Okay, great. Yeah. Okay, what, what yeah. other one do you have? Uh, we have um, Ikoyi blindness. Okay. Ikoyi blindness. Um, everything's kata. So you can see how eclectic my style was. H how did this yeah. reflect on, so, on um, you know, commercial, um, you know, acceptability? How, how did all yeah. this, this the, really, the, you know, colorful okay. reflection, how, how did it reflect? Oh, the very interesting thing is, um, I was talking to a young man yesterday, and he reflected that his dad told him, those days there was no musical videos. So what people did was they held the album cover, and they're looking at the illustration and listening to the music and they're enjoying it. It's the yes. visual for them, mm. you know, because there was no vis um, musical videos then. So that's how deep it was. And that's a stark yeah. reality now. Well, yes. I, 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 I experienced that too, because when, yeah. you, when you heard the, the, when you were listening to the music, you were also holding the album. Yeah. yeah that, right. was, that, yes. was, that was, yes. Many and, homes, many and homes were incomplete yes. without, yes. without, And I put you know, lyrics like in there, mm. lyrics ah, and credits. Ah, oh, All the musicians are mentioned. You know, the lyrics is there, so you read. And sometimes, I created a column I call designer's comment. Mm. So I explain. So giving you some form of freedom to, yes, to also put your I explain your what is on illustration because I didn't illustrate the lyrics literally. I illustrated from my own perspective, yes. relating to what Fela is saying. And because he trusted me so much, because we share the ideology in totality. So it, it became very effective that way. You said you, you joined um, you know, the Fela team, so yeah. to speak, at the age of 18, and yes. then, you know, 
of course, life continued, but mm. then you were an integral part somewhat yes. of, you yes. know, Fela's music career. Yes. Perhaps uh, eventually a member of the household. Movement. Yes, uh, oh. I was a member, founding oh, member right. of Young African Pioneers, mm. okay. which was the youth political movement. Okay. Because we wanted to start a youth vanguard, you know, um, to, you know, educate them in the right African history. Right. Because the problem the African as a race has till today mm. is the brainwash the neocolonialism from colonialism, uh, slavery to colonialism right. to neocolonialism, and now mm. self-colonization. Mm. So we still need to work on our psyche. Well, that, that's yeah. also another element yeah. of, you know, you know, vintage, you know, fella, fella yeah. ideologies. Yeah. But, but then at a point, you know, various accounts and reports would, would say, both of you fell apart. Yes. As some say, some, yeah. some say uh, <laughs> perhaps, because you said Fela had likely accepted all your works, yes. and then maybe perhaps you guys had uh, uh, differences mm. yeah. in, in desires, you not yeah. accurately reflecting what he wanted, or maybe you being heady. How do you describe if you reminisce on, mm. on those happenings? Yeah, it makes me smile, even though sometimes I, I feel pain in my heart. But what happened, you know? first um, off? It's, 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 you know, it's a natural human scenario. You know, it was like a love affair because we were in love with each other so deeply. But it got to a point, um, ego started clashing. You know, I was becoming very powerful in my role. You had grown. <laughs> yes. Mm. And um, I, had, I did a cover, um, JJD, and Fela rejected it. it ah, I was shocked. But I didn't agree with him. But that's I, the first time that yes, you would have a Yes, the first time. So, but, you know, he was my master, so I couldn't say no to him so he gave me a concept he never gave me concept before so i took i said okay so i i, I worked on that concept for him to please him i showed him he said good but inside me i said i'm not trashing my own so i went to the managing director of deca the Oyibo man, mm -hmm. uh, because i was that powerful in my role so i went to him i told him we are doing a double sleeve even though it's a single album he said oh but he said, but I love, yeah, the double gatefold, it's beautiful. So he went to England to print. They used to print those days in rubber sticks in England. So about a couple of weeks back and uh, later, he got back, sent for me to come and see the print. And he said, lovely. I said, yeah, lovely, double. So he said, go and show it to Fela. My heart skipped a bit. So I went, I, I said to Fela, I showed him. I said, Fela, this is your own. <laughs> he was smiling. I just turned it back. I said, this is my so own. So that's double, front yeah. and back. Yes, okay. right. without his permission. And you understand? His response, because I, yeah? And his response. He looked at me and went really angry. I said, let me, you hit me below the belt. So I ran away. I didn't come back to Calcutta that day. Till the next day. So he had cooled down. So, but I knew <laughs> he kept it somewhere. Two years later, he had the opportunity. He rejected this sorrow, tears and blood. Mm. And I was heartbroken. And I walked away. I walked away. But do you, think that, eight years. do you think you were right? Yeah. I mean, he is the, yeah. he, <laughs> he, he, he is the owner <laughs> of the vision. Hey. And you are trying to subvert it. Yeah, he is the owner of the vision. But yeah. the universe sent me to collaborate. Which universe? <laughs> Uh, Ile Dumari. Ile Dumari. <laughs> yes. Ile Dumari didn't tell him. If you were right, sent you, you should tell him too. He wants the vision. So, so you are a false so, prophet. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, okay. Okay, now, you know, um, he rejected that cover in 1978. Yeah. I did, was you, did, you, did you keep yeah. that like you did? I kept for, it for 32 sorry. years. Okay. 32 years. I kept that so cover. So he had his way at the time? Yeah, at that time. Okay. He used a different cover. Not yours? Or was it no, yours? not mine. Okay. For 32 years. And I got it back on the cover after the two years. Okay. Then how, he was how did alive that happen? Or when he was no, exactly. he was gone already. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We, I had so um, you are revenging. You are revenging. You are revenging the dead. I, I've, I've done what the universe sent me to do. Finish. Okay, but, but but then <laughs> was there room for yeah. reconciliation? And did you yes, there was reconciliation. It? Eight did it years eventually later. happen? Okay, yes, you were getting to that. Right? Yeah, eight years after we reconciled after eight years. So the other covers I did there and then uh, we were under um, the auspices of uh, Beko Ransomputi, who was handling his business. You know, when he went to jail, Beko took over. So any uh, uh, music that is so important, Beko will send me a letter inviting me to come and listen. So it was a business relationship I had with Fela towards the At end. At that time. Yes. What, what is your sense of Fela's uh, politics vis-a-vis -vis his brothers? Because you are saying that uh, mm -hmm. Fela 
had an epiphany mm -hmm. only when he went to the U.S. Mm -hmm. yeah. But his mother was already political. Mm -hmm. His brothers, Beko, uh, Oluko, Oliko, Oye, Beko, yeah. and Oliko, yes. they were all political Activists, in their own right, sense. Mm -hmm. right. Why did he have to go to U.S. to move from the uh, profane to the political? Um, political, they were all. Mm -hmm. But ideologically, they were on different okay. pedestals. Pan-Africanism is what Fela was fighting for. The brothers were in pa fighting no, for No, but it's music. The music yeah. before then yeah. had nothing even political. Yeah. Uh, cool, cool. It had nothing to do with political. Uh, but that was, we were talking it about was the epiphany. Saying, yeah, that's, yeah, what, right, that's right. what I'm saying. Yeah. That, that epiphany yeah. came. Yeah. Why did it have to come from outside when I, we thought that it was already there? In, in with the family, with the mother was... That, that's the problem of colonialism. The miseducation we've been going through for centuries. Right. It gets us confused as a human being, as a race. So he had to go to America, well, where he was taught to be African. For that encounter. Yes. And okay. he said it too. He said he was in Nigeria, his own country. He didn't know how to and, be African. And had been uh, somewhat blind. Yeah, like, blind. Like so the mother Nigeria was already too. African. I mean, you read the history of uh, the mother. The mother was a, was a nationalist, was uh, anti anti-imperialist. She was anti-establishment. She so had everything. What was her relationship with her mother yeah. as you know it? Yeah. Mm. It was very cordial. Extremely so. The mother um, shared everything with him, the ideology in totality. For the fact that Fela changed the family name from Ransom Kuti to Anikulak Bokuti in 1975, mm. uh, all the brothers refused, but the mother agreed and took up that name. So you know how against close the they others. were. Uh, yeah. amazing, because there was some amazing. time uh, Fela called uh, some, some of us to his, um, to his um, what do you call it, to his, to his room okay. in, uh, okay. in the Kedja. Yeah, okay. uh, it was myself, I remember, uh, Dile Momodu, Oh, okay. uh, Ohi Alegbe, Bayo oh, okay. um, Nonuga, oh, yeah. uh, Femi Judu, oh. and we're there, and it was to talk about something like a, uh, an anniversary of his mother's death. Mm. We thought he had something to say. He really had nothing to say. No. We were saying, this is not the time for go, go, go. This is not guy for anything. You know. He yeah, mama, don't die. Yeah. Like, well, just, mm. He just wanted to vent. Yeah. That's what he wanted yes. to do. Yeah, he shows how very close mom. he was to the mother. Yeah, his mom right. is one of his saints. Right. Uh, yeah. Okay, so in modern day, I, I understand you designed a cover for files. Yes, right? yes. Do you and have that here? And, and what oh, does that no. say yeah. about um, your, your, your thing or your perception about Afrobeat musicians at this time? We have some people yeah. who profess to be self, um, you know, uh, self profess to be Afrobeat artists. But mm -hmm. is it how you see it? Is it how it's supposed to be? And why files? Yeah, um, I think Afrobeats with the S, I totally agree with from inception, from the first time, although some purists were against that terminology, but growth has to come, elements of growth has to come. Reggae music has over 15 patterns, but it's still known as reggae. There is dancehall, there is raga. So this current pattern that is called Afrobeats uh, tells to the fact that uh, uh, young people, generations have been inspired by the foundation that Fela and Nicola Pokuti laid. So I'm totally in sync with this. I love it. And why Fowles? Fowles sought me out himself. Even though sometimes I feel like these young people, I wish, you know, we could have a connect. But, you know, I can't go begging anybody. So Bob Faust came and sought me out, and I felt really happy and proud to work with him for that uh, moral instruction cover. And um, we created a record in a way because I designed nine covers. I have covers. a feeling that Faust came because of, yeah. uh, because of the father. Um, oh, oh. Hey, 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 you don't know that. I don't have Femi, Femi Falano. Mm. Yes. Femi Falano yeah. is a very strong... Yeah. If I even call Rebid yeah. Fela fan. Yeah, he was Fela oh, lawyer. Recall, I recall. Not only being his lawyer, right. yeah. I went to Falano's, uh, uh, um, what do you do before you get married, that party? Oh, bachelor's okay, Bachelor's Eve. Eve. Okay, yeah. Bachelor's okay. Eve. Okay. Koji Koko. Uh, yeah, Koko, of course. Koji Koko. That yes. was the song <laughs> yes, that Fela, that uh, 
Fenny Falano responded to mm -hmm. that night. Yeah. And he started, he started mm. jumping and dancing. He went beyond he, lawyer crime. Yeah, no, 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 there yeah. was nothing like that. Yeah, Fowler so, used to say that Fela, every Fela day was, uh, driving to school, the school. father played only Fela, Fela in, the, exactly. in, the, in, the, in, exactly. the, in the car. Mm -hmm. yeah, so. so that was an yeah. influence, yeah. a strong influence. And so, of course, we see yeah. so many musicians, you know, talk about, you know, mm -hmm. how Fela influenced them in mm -hmm. their present day mm -hmm. work. But mm -hmm. um, talking about revolutionizing, you know, yes. the, the this this craft. Are we there yet, looking at our content, the content that we hear now? Uh, how yeah. satisfied yeah. are you? Yeah, that's that's where I have um, some reservations, the content, because I believe content is very important, especially our society needs a lot of directions. Philosophers need to play their role. Mm -hmm. um, creatives are supposed to be philosophers, and they're supposed to reflect, a genuine creative reflects the environment. So the, the content is my issue. Um, it's like 95% of the content is, you know, it's, it's very trivial. Um, it's about a woman's body or, you know, bling or fancy car or what you are drinking. But I, 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 I love to see, you know, conscious content that is, you know, trying to bring in solutions, you know, into problems of Does society. Does it not mean that you're so, out of sync with the, yeah. you're out of sync with uh, the, the new reality? New reality. Right. And also, yeah. I also want you to reflect to reflect uh, the fact that we are going into a new medium. How do you reconcile your, your art with the new social medium, with the mm -hmm. new internet, uh, social, um, uh, new technology? Yeah, I'm still, I'm still on. Mm -hmm. I'm still doing covers. Mm -hmm. This year, I did a cover for Newen Afrobeat, mm -hmm. a Chile Afrobeat band. Mm -hmm. They are Oyibos. They play Afrobeat. Mm -hmm. um, I just finished a cover uh, three weeks ago for um, a group called Yankari Afrobeat Collective. They are in the um, Republic of Ireland. So I'm still doing covers, even though it's um, streaming age. Right. Uh, there are still uh, people who collect vinyl. Mm -hmm. The vinyl is having a resurgence in really? a very yeah, limited edition printer. Right, okay. Every in album Nigeria now. too? Yes, even oh, in Nigeria. Great. Yes, great. yes, great. yes. Uh, even great. Bonaboy made vinyl. Uh, Asha made vinyl of her mm. last uh, LP. Mm. So right. I'm still yes. on Fela, over 2,000 covers Fela, to my Fela, credit. Fela wow. made classic. 50 great. years. Great. Yes, Fela great. made classic. Great. Yes, great. yes, great. yes. Uh, timeless, uh, timeless work yes, is, is good. Yeah. It's, yes, it's I been... just uh, did um, a, a cover, a book cover for this a young man. Okay. Uh, he's a Nigerian. Um, uh, it's a book on poetry. And I was impressed. He insisted I have to do his cover. Mm. And you know, I said, okay, let me do it. So it's a new um, product in the market. Right. It's just Fantastic. a small poetry book. Uh, the poem is about Nigeria, you know, right. um, solutions and all that. Oh, great. So that's, that's how right. far art can go. Absolutely. Fela will never, Fela, yes. Fela will yes. never go. I himself right. said, Fela, you don't come again. Yeah. Yes. You never All come right. again. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Great uh, place to <laughs> yes. rest our conversation at this time. Let me, Garyoko, we really appreciate uh, your time with us you. here on TVC Breakfast. I really appreciate your inviting wish you, me. Wish you the right. very best. Yes. Obviously, you're still yes. in your element. So, yes. well, right. Great. 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 We're Mimo, right? Right. Uh, no, no, this is Sorry, Kemi. This is Kemi. This is, I'm Kemi. Oh, Kemi. Sorry. Kemi. Yeah, yeah. All right. Thanks again. We appreciate. Okay.